What's up everyone? Today's video is one that I'm genuinely very proud of and I think that you're gonna love it whether you are an advanced player or you are a beginner or whether you don't even play that much but you just enjoy learning about the game. So today's video is going to talk to you about T position and just from the first image that you see in the caption I wrote, what? You're not on the T? <laughs> That's what this video is all about. You see Ali Farag over there and he's not even close to the physical T. But hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's jump into this piece by piece. So the first thing that I want to show you guys is actually the following. Here's my little attempt at a court. And I'm showing you players in different positions of the court hitting various shots. And what we're looking at again is T position. And this is my question to you. What common themes do you see? Take a minute, pause, reflect, think about it. And then let's talk about this piece by piece. Make sure you write it down. If you really want to maximize your learning from here, write it down. Now, if you noticed in each of these images, the players are in different positions. If you'll notice, they're rarely squarely centered on the T. They're often skewed in the direction on the side of play and the area of play, whether it's the front court, mid court or back court. You see that on the left hand side, for example, the top left image, you see Shorbagi in the front left and he's not even close to the T, he's way up in front. Mid left, you see Shorbagi is to the left of the T. Back left, you see Farag is to the left of the T. On the right side, you see the same thing. Bottom right, Farag is on the right of the T. Mid right, Shorbagi is to the right of the T. And in the front right, Farag is actually quite neutral on the T, skewing his momentum is moving a little bit to the right side because Shorbagi is hitting from the right side of the court. The other thing that you'll notice, and I'm going to talk about all of this in depth shortly, is that the player's position, look at the angle of the chest and look at the feet. They're differing every time. In the front, the feet are angled to the front, chest is to the front. In the mid court, this a little bit more towards the mid. In the back, you see some the head is turned and the body is angled to be able to see what's going on in the back. And you see the same thing on the right side, Shrabagi's turned to the right, Farag rather is turned to the right, and his chest is a bit open to the right. In the mid, Shorbagi's looking at the ball and kind of moving sideways. And in the front, Farag is moving to the front with a particular foot position. And I'm going to talk about that momentarily. But before I get into all of those details, let's tell you a bit about this theory. So there's this idea of the floating T. And I'm going to go through these pieces one by one. I talked a bit about it. Your foot placement and your body angle shifts depending on where your opponent is, depending on the quality of shot that you've hit, depending on your opponent's patterns, depending on the number of consecutive shots your opponent or you have hit from that same position that will influence your floating T position. It depends on your movement ability. It depends on so many factors, including your risk preference. So if you like to hedge your bets, if you like to play a little bit of a lottery, <laughs> You can start moving and cheat over more than you normally would, assuming or expecting your opponent to hit a particular shot. So all of these factors come into play. So here we go. Here's this idea of the floating tee. As you notice, I drew this little green box in the middle of my court diagram. That's to give you a sense that players can be anywhere within this box. Their tee position could fall anywhere within that box. And that is still technically a correct T position because they are being dynamic relative to where and how the game is being played and what their capabilities are and what their opponent's capabilities are on the day. You might have an opponent who can do anything and everything, but on that day, they're only playing one shot out of that back left. So if the only thing your opponent plays out of the back left is a straight drive, there's absolutely no reason for you to be totally centered on the tee. You probably want to cheat back into the left a little bit because that's minimizing your distance. Now, as soon as your opponent shows you that they can hit more than one shot from here, now you're going to have to check your tee position because you can get caught off very easily if you continue to hold that position. So like I said, the pressure that you 
uh, or your opponent are under will determine your T position. How well you move will determine your T position. The patterns or the shots that your opponent has hit, and like the example I just gave, their capability. So do they have one option from the back left or do they have four options from the back left? That's going to impact your T position. And then the area of the court the game is being played in. So if you're playing primarily in the back left, your T position will never be skewed to the front right unless you have hit a phenomenal length that is dying and the only choice your opponent possibly has is a boast. In that case, you know that ball is going to be coming to the front right, so you will start cheating over. But you don't want to start here before your opponent has hit the ball. You still start in a more reasonable tee position, and then you slowly start gravitating forward when you get that visual and psychological confirmation that your opponent is, in fact, going to be hitting that boast. So that's the idea of the floating tee and what it can look like. Now if we take this another step forward, you know how we talked about foot placement and body angle. Well, here's what that looks like. Depending on where the game is being played, the feet change. There's a bit of a stagger in our stance. So if you look at this back left corner, I didn't put the mid because the mid look a little bit like the front. They're slightly different and it would get very, uh, it would get a little bit jumbled up <laughs> in the diagram. But we'll, I'm gonna show you examples in a moment. If you look at the back, if your opponent's hitting, the O is for opponent. If the opponent is hitting in the back left, which is the green O, then you're, you are going to be on the T, not too far back, because if you're, we're assuming your opponent has various shot options, and you're gonna be staggered with your feet, with your left foot back a little bit, right foot in front a little bit, because this right foot is gonna help you push and then move back. And I just looked at myself in the camera. I got back on the squash court after six months, a uh, week and a half ago, and the very first day I went, I ended up getting this blister right here and it still hasn't healed because I have this massive callus which after six months of no squash due to lockdowns became soft skin <laughs> and now it's firming up. But I diverge. Let me get back to this. So as I was saying, right foot is forward. Well, for you, it's going to look a little bit different on the camera. So let's say this is my right foot. Right foot is forward, left foot is back and this right foot is going to be able to push me into that back left corner. So you always stay a little bit staggered and this stagger also really, really helps you move in any direction. Let's say instead of the straight drive, the green O opponent hits a boast. Well, now this ball's going to the front right. Well, in this stagger, now your left foot will push you into the front right. If they end up hitting into the front left, you have to change the stagger a little bit, but that right foot plants and then you go into the front. And then if you have to go to the back right, well, then the stagger shifts and the left foot plants, and then you move into the back right. So there's split step, split, the split step is involved in here. There's timing of the split step. There's open versus closed stance. There's a ton of stuff when it comes to movement. So obviously what I said varies depending on the scenario, but that's a guide to teach you guys a little bit about this. And as I said, if you have if you have your opponent under a lot of pressure, you can cheat over a little bit. So if my opponent is here, I give the boast example, if they're, if they're really, really under pressure with the tight length that I hit and their only shot they have a boast, instead of standing where the green left right feet are, you might end up slowly gravitating right before they hit the shot. When you confirm that it's a boast, you might slowly gravitate closer to this yellow left right because you're now closer to that front right corner. Similarly, if the only shot they ever hit from the back left is a straight drive, well, instead of where the green LR is, you might actually shift over here where my mouse cursor is because now you're hedging your bets as well. Now let's consider some examples and I've shown you some diagrams over here and then I've overlaid the diagram that I just showed you guys. In this image, and I drew this little floating tee box over here, this was a cool one because it's rare that we get the aerial shot, but the aerial shot clearly shows where Ali Farag is standing. You see him similar to the green LR that I drew. His left foot is here, his right foot is here, the right foot is slightly in front of the left foot, body is at a slight angle, his chest is turned a little bit, and his face is turned because he's watching the ball. So there you see Farag demonstrating exactly what I drew with the green LR. In the next clip over here, you see Farag in the midcourt, and it's similar to the front court, like I said earlier. So if you look at the red LRR, Farag's right foot is back, left foot is slightly in front, and he's a little bit to the left of the tee. 
moving to the left because he has Shorbagi kind of pinned with a pretty tight length. So Farag is hedging his bets, assuming that the ball is going to be played down the wall again because Shorbagi doesn't have the angle. He might, but I don't know if he's played that much in the match, but he doesn't have, it's more likely that he's going to hit the straight drive instead of the cross court, basically. So Farag is hedging his bets. Now, if you move on from here to the next clip, well, the next image, which is Shorbagi in the front left, what you'll notice is Shorbagi has Farag under a ton of pressure. Farag is pretty far up in the court. The ball is glued to the side wall. So Shorbagi is really he's camping quite far up over here and he has the same foot pattern we see in the red left foot is in front right foot is slightly behind he's in a nice athletic position slightly bent knee because he can push forward he's going to use his right foot to push forward in order to play farag's counter drop he's also standing that far forward because farag has limited options and by being here shorbagi actually cuts down farag's angles so if we're over here Farag hits a straight drive, Shorbagi can put his racket out to the left. It's probably going to be a stroke unless he hits a straight drive that's glued to the wall. If Farag tries to lob, if Shorbagi is closer up, Farag has to go really, really steep with his angle and Shorbagi can probably volley it. And if Farag goes cross court, Shorbagi can reach across and probably volley it unless Farag goes extremely wide. So he's making it very difficult for Farag over here and Shorbagi is basically cutting down all the angles and he's allowing himself, he's putting himself in a position to play the ball earlier, which will then put even more pressure on Farag. And from a tactical perspective, the smartest shot would probably be to hit anywhere to the open court. Furthest point would be the back right if the opportunity arises. Now from there, we move on to the next clip, which is of Farag on the tee with Shorbagi in the front right. But if you notice, Shorbagi was way up when Farag was in the front and in this case Farag is not that far up. Well the reason is because in this situation Shorbagi is not under a ton of pressure so Farag has to be a little bit more honest with his tee position because he needs to be able to cover a straight drive, a trickle boast, a straight drop, a cross court drive, anything. And because his the ball that Shorbagi is playing is not that far forward in the court, he has to give Shorbagi enough room. So if he were all the way up here, it would be a stroke because he would be in Shorbagi's swing path. So in this situation, you still see that he's skewed. You still see that his left foot is slightly behind the right foot. So that left foot will allow him to push off the left to move into the front right or push off the left to move across the middle of the court to the right side or change the angle a little bit and then push off the left to go to the back right and vice versa the right foot would plant to move to the left side of the court from there let's check out another one which will be the mid court in this case so we see Shorbagi's a pretty loose ball into the mid court Farag is ready to play it and what you notice is Shorbagi's left foot is behind his right foot is in front so that's the same thing as this yellow LR that I drew over here and you see that his body's momentum is moving to the left in order to cover what he's anticipating here to be a straight drop from Farag. And you notice right before Farag is about to make contact with the ball, Shorbagi's feet are in the air, and that's the timing of the split step that uh, Shorbagi has cemented in this situation. And because as soon as he lands, Farag would have just played his shot. Shorbagi's brain would have processed what shot Farag just played. His feet land, and then he can explode forward into the ball. And then from there, the last corner that we're going to look at is obviously the back right corner. And we see over here, if we look at the gray LR in my diagram, left foot is in front, right foot is behind, and they're angled a little bit to the side. That's what you see with Farag. His left foot is in front, right foot is behind. Body, feet, chest, face are all angled towards the corner where Shorbagi is playing the ball. And you see he's obviously a bit to the right of the tee. And another really cool view that I wanted to show you with the specific footwork and a little tip when you're under a lot of pressure, we see over here Faris Dasuki in the pink colored shirt. He's under a lot of pressure here. I believe this is against uh, Muhammad Shorbagi. He's under a lot of pressure. Shorbagi is winding up. He has lots of options from this position. And look how Faris is standing. Let's look at the couple of things that we just talked about. Shorbagi is in the front right corner. So Ferris is pretty neutral, but he's a little bit over to the front right corner. And then the second thing is, if you look back at our diagram, 
when you're going into that front right corner, your left foot is back, your right foot is in front because you're going to use that left foot to push off and move into the front corner. Well, that's exactly what we see here. Left foot is back, right foot is in front. He's staggered with his feet because you don't want to be one foot right in front of the other because you're going to lose your balance. So he's staggered with his feet. He's in an athletic position. His knees are bent. He's slightly crouched. And this is almost, this was very reminiscent to me of a sprinting position because you kind of end up in the sprinting position with your feet staggered, your knees slightly bent, and that's how you can accelerate. And that's exactly what this is. Shorbagi has a hold. I'm going to play this. It's a little video clip. Shorbagi has a hold. So you see Farag sort of like stumble a little bit before he adjusts. But notice how he's starting in order to accelerate. And there it is. And he goes and gets that ball. So here is your homework. I would highly encourage you, if you want to apply this learning to yourself, to reflect upon two things. Number one, do you adjust your T position just as you saw the pros do and from you saw from my diagrams? Do you adjust your T position when you're playing your match based on your shot quality, where the game is being played, your opponent's options, the pressure, all of that stuff? And the second thing is, for you to reflect upon how you can actually apply our discussion to your unique abilities. So if you're 65 and your movement is not the best, your scenario is going to look a little bit different than someone who's 16 and they move like this and they're super fleet footed and they can cover anything on the court. The 16 year old who can cover anything but maybe doesn't have the best shot accuracy or ball control might need to be more neutral on the tee. The 65 year old who can pin your opponents in the back corner might be able to adjust their tee position and cheat, cheat a little bit more because it'll be effective. So I would encourage you to think about how you can apply all of these things to your own game. So folks, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you have seen that the top players in the world do adjust their tee position based on all of the factors we've talked about. And now I am giving you the responsibility to see how it applies to your own game. If you enjoyed the video, as always, please give it a thumbs up, put a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I really appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.